The adoption of public cloud is definitely on the rise, with around 60% of organisations globally admitting to having deployed enterprise applications in two or more public clouds already. So why does it feel that the adoption of a multi-cloud approach is inevitable? Well, there are many reasons for this. Firstly, the increase in the number of outages from the major public cloud providers seems to be on the increase. We read about these things on a week-to-week -week basis. Uh, so resilience is a key factor in the decision-making process for organisations migrating workloads to the public cloud. Secondly, public cloud providers have strengths and weaknesses. AWS very strong in IoT, Azure very strong in office-based applications. So naturally, we'll see organisations migrate workloads to the appropriate public cloud providers. And thirdly, businesses that want to avoid vendor lock-in, retain agility and flexibility, and look for economies of scale. These are just three of many reasons as to why most organisations are heading in this direction. Now the implementation and management of a multi-cloud environment and the considerations around security for an increased attack surface and potential performance issues based on branch to cloud distances are all considerations businesses need to think about up front and for some they may become very close to becoming a showstopper. So what are some of the specific reasons why organisations are struggling to transition to multi-cloud environments? Well, legacy MPLS VPN networks are a hub and spoke architecture with some data centres and a number of branches where data centres are the central point for the traffic and applications to break out outside the enterprise network. Now, obviously, these types of networks were not designed for cloud applications in the first place and cannot be transformed into a cloud-first architecture where branches directly connect to each cloud. Legacy networks with direct connect or express route connections to the cloud introduce performance problems. They can become very complex to implement and maintain. They don't deal with security issues. There's no segmentation or traffic encryption and they can become very expensive. Imagine multiple direct connect or express routes from each data center to each cloud availability zone. Legacy network technology cannot resolve these issues. Now there are a number of solutions from various providers that try to address these problems one way by building their own network or other ways where they use automation. We take Microsoft and their VWAN backbone which is marketed as a high performance low latency network now, whilst the complexities of deploying VWAN are hidden through full automation, the underlying network is still the same legacy type of network, a combination of point-to-point -point links and MPLS third-party networks, and therefore the performance, visibility, management and cost challenges aren't addressed by those solutions. So it's clear there are some fundamental challenges when it comes to not just the technology and the architecture, but also choosing the right cloud providers and the types of network that support the applications. So what have Tenio done to solve these problems for other customers? Well, private cloud deployments can be extremely complex, but with experience comes efficiency. And at Tenio, we now have several production customer implementations covering multi-cloud integrations with AWS Transit VPCs and Transit Gateways, Azure vHubs and vWAN, and Google CVPN and Shared VPCs. We've created pre-designed, fully automated solutions to deliver an SD-WAN network that connects your data centers and branches with a multi-cloud environment, eliminating complexity. And this means that we can deliver a cloud-first architecture that connects directly any data center or branch using any transport, removing any need for expensive direct connect or express route circuits. We can gain approximately five to 10x performance enhancements for applications when using our preferred SD-WAN technology from Silverpeak. And we can gain security enhancements such as end-to-end -end encryption over any transport, end-to-end -end network segmentation, as well as SASE branch compliance. Now in this graphic, we represent the rapid deployment of a new branch integration and implementation, which can be done in minutes. And in this diagram, we represent the rapid deployment of a new cloud availability zone by replicating the in-cloud and SD-WAN implementation again in minutes. 
Now, final point, which is really important, is that we ensure risk-free implementation, where we can keep your legacy network available as a fallback option, whilst we design and test the new SD-WAN implementation as an out-of-path deployment. And in this way, we can ensure that your traffic and applications perform as planned, switching over when we are satisfied that everything works in line with our design. Just to finish on, we know the adoption of SaaS applications has seen a sharp increase since the onset of COVID-19. And we're often asked the question as to whether WAN optimization is still needed as applications are retired from corporate data centers in favor of SaaS applications. So the question therefore is, is where does SaaS applications and WAN optimization fit into the overall picture of a multi-cloud environment? Well, there are two SaaS integration issues we can identify in this picture. Firstly, the SaaS applications can be in a single cloud region and therefore the round trip time can be very high from remote geographical locations and sometimes not be able to satisfy that particular SaaS application's performance requirements. And secondly, SD-WAN vendors typically cannot spin up virtual appliances inside the SaaS provider's own cloud. So typical access to these SaaS applications will be via a local internet breakout at each site, which is a path that can encounter performance and reliability issues. So this is the orange path in this diagram. In this next diagram, the SD-WAN vendors address this through the ability to nominate SD-WAN appliances in your network to become SaaS gateways and then route the traffic via these gateways. So this is the data center and cloud uh, Google Cloud in the diagram. This solution doesn't improve the performance per se, but guarantees the best routing path almost all of the time. Now, most of the SD-WAN vendors are stopped here when it comes to SaaS optimization. Now, fortunately with Silverpeak, the problem can be further addressed using WAN optimization called Boost, which will optimize the path between the end user and the gateway, providing lower latency and higher application performance alongside path conditioning techniques such as packet order correction, forward error correction, which deal with packet loss and delays on all sorts of transports. And it's not just about the best routed path selection, which most of the SD-WAN vendors can do. This must be combined with WAN optimization technology, as Silverpeak do, to achieve proper SaaS optimization in a multi-cloud environment.